Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's ABC Optum Workshop. My name is Heather Pease, and I'm with Benefits Administration. Today, we are going to review the Optum Employer Portal. I would like to address a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. If you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, and of course, you guys are very familiar with this process, um, but please feel free to to make those comments and questions through the chat function or by unmuting yourself, we'd love to hear from you. And if you think of any questions after the presentation is over, you can email it to benefits.info at tn.gov. I'll be sure to put that in the chat box for you in just a minute. And the slides for this presentation will be sent through the ABC email. And in addition, we are recording this webinar and we'll post it um, sometime next week. Now, I'd like to introduce today's presenters, and you've most likely heard from them on an ABC call recently. Lenny Stelk is a Senior Relationship Manager for Optum Bank. She's been with Optum for 18 years and in her current role since 2014. Lenny approaches her role with a clear focus and says her mission is to understand the client's perspective and expectations and provide partnership and consultative services to address their goals and initiatives. We also have Nicole Jardine, um, account coordinator with Optum Bank. She brings with her over three years of experience servicing account holders and employers and brokers in a financial capacity. Nicole started with Optum in 2017 as a customer service representative working with health savings account holders, and her proficiency in this product quickly led to learning other products such as FSAs, and after just a year with the company, she was promoted to a team lead position where she was able to work with these accounts in uh, much greater depth. Throughout her career with Optum, Nicole has formed significant customer relationships by providing exceptional customer service. Lenny, Nicole, thank you both for being here. And with that, I will turn it over to Lenny. Thank you, Heather. Wow, that was a lot to uh, to throw at you guys this morning. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Nicole and I both really appreciate this time and y'all's participation. Uh, I know you've got a big list coming, changing providers uh, from Payflex to Optum. And uh, so we wanna make sure that you feel prepared. Uh, to make that flip. So look at today as a great start as an overview for the Optum Employer Portal. Uh, I know you'll be using it a lot. Uh, you'll get to know it over time and we want to introduce it to you today. Um, to kind of slim down sort of our roles with the state of Tennessee. So um, I am the relationship manager for the state of Tennessee contract. So I will be managing that piece of it through Benefit Administration. And Nicole is uh, really the one who does all of the work behind the scenes. She is the subject matter expert in how the State of Tennessee plans are, um, are administrated. So the employer support team, who is your day-to-day -day contact and will provide that information, uh, she has line of sight with that group and, and operates as a subject matter expert for them. So um, without further ado, let's take a look at our, our agenda. We have this call scheduled for about an hour. We will be pretty brief going through this information. Uh, you'll see several different things in screenshots. Uh, but know that we're going to leave lots of time for your questions so that you can take this opportunity um, to ask those. We are going to look at setting up your access to the portal, how that works. You'll get a temporary password. In fact, many of you probably got an email already this morning. If you haven't checked your email, uh, do check it out today. You should see that in there. Um, also, we will walk through several different screens particularly on reporting, show you where to find them, what's accessible. What's accessible. Um, the contribution piece, how you um, are able to get to that in the portal and upload files or do one-off types of things with contributions and your employee detail 
uh, enrollment profile type information. And then where to access any file uh, errors or reporting that you want to administer yourself. So let's get started. Nicole, if you'd like to kick us off with those portal credentials, it's all yours. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. And to echo Lenny's sentiments, thank, thank you everybody for being available and able to join us today for a training session on how to use the Optum Bank Employer Portal. At this time, everyone should have received an email including a link directly to the portal as well as your temporary password in order to get logged into the site. When you get to the portal, you will use your email address as your user ID and the temporary password provided to you within the email. Once you use this email, your email address and the temporary password to log in for the first time, the system will prompt you to create your own password. Please note the temporary password will expire after 72 hours. In the case that you're not able to log on with this seven, within the 72 hour time frame, please reach out to the account services team to have a new temporary email password to, issued to you. If you have not received a temporary password from Optum and need access to the Optum employer portal, Please have someone from your HR team who already has access to the employer portal reach out to the Optum Account Services team to have you added with access as well. If no one from your agency has access yet, this means that you are most likely not currently making HSA contributions for your employees. In this situation, the new client checklist form available on the Partners for Health website will need to be filled out in order to gain access to the Optum Bank employer portal. The form will indicate the agency's general information, as well as who should have access to the portal in order to facilitate contributions for their employees. This form can be returned to the account services email address that you see on the screen here as well. Next slide, please. In order to assist you now and in the future with using the employer portal, we have added an Optum Bank employer portal guide as a link within the slideshow, as well as the guide being available on the Partners for Health website under the Agency Benefit Coordinators tab. This guide will help walk you through completing simple actions within the portal, as well as being a reference for the tools and resources that are available to you. After the presentation today, we will show you where to find this guide, as well as other resources mentioned throughout this presentation that are available to you on the Partners for Health website. When you first log in to the Optum Bank Employer Portal, this is what the home page will look like. In that orange bar you see that runs across the top of the page, you will be able to toggle through the different actions and tools that are available to you, as well as viewing any recently created reports specific to your group. Next slide, please. From the home page, you can either click on one of the recently created reports by clicking on the blue hyperlinked name of the report, or you can click on the View All Reports link below the list of reports. If you click into the View All Reports link, you will be brought to a page that looks similar to the screenshot here. To the right of the reports, you can click Run New Report in order to have a new report generated for your specific needs. When viewing the Reports tab right now, you may not see any reports available to you. Please note that the reporting portion of the employer portal is still being set up for the higher education groups. Some of the reports that will be available to you to run directly through the employer portal are listed here. A few different reports that I think will be useful for the local education groups are the HSA account detail report, which will show an overview of each employee's HSA deductions by either a tax year or year to date level. And the HSA funding collection notification, which will show the payroll deductions that are to be collected from your agency. Next slide, please. Now that we have discussed the home page as well as the reports page of the employer portal, we will move on to the employees page. If you hover over the employees tab on that orange bar that runs across the top of the page, you will have a few different options on the actions you can take. You can either click view all employees to be taken to a page where all employees are listed. You can search for an employee using the search bars, or you can view your last five recently viewed employees for quick access to where you might have already been reviewing. Additionally, you are able to click the Add Employees link at the top of the drop-down box in order to add employees' demographic information into our systems. But please note that the state will be submitting demographic and enrollment files for employees who wish to participate in the HSA in order to add this information to our system. Please follow your standard process for enrolling employees in the HSA and providing the information to the state so that they are able to send the employees' HSA enrollments directly to Optum. 
Next slide, please. On a specific employee, once a specific employee has been selected under the Employees tab, you are able to view their demographic information under the profile link or can view their enrollments, contributions, or current and previous employment statuses by clicking on each link, respectively. By clicking the Update Profile link, you will have the ability to update the employee's demographic information if it is not reflecting correctly within our system or the employee has noted a change. Please note that any updates to demographic information that are made within the Optum system should also be made in Edison to ensure the information is reflecting accurately within both systems and to ensure an employee's information is not changed by a file upload. Employees will also have the ability to update their demographic information from their personal consumer web portal. Under the Enrollments tab, on the Employees page, you will be able to view the HSA enrollment and effective date, as well as the employee's contribution and payroll deduction amount if permitted by your agency. The Status tab will be used to view or update the employee's employment status. To change their status, you can click on Add New Status and update the status with the appropriate status effective date. If a status was entered in error, simply click the Remove Status Hyperlink. Please keep in mind this information can either be updated via the employer portal or transmitted via the file. Next page. On the orange bar that runs across the top of the page, you will see the Plans tab. Navigating to this page will allow you to view the HSA plan and a basic description of the plan. By clicking on the hyperlinked plan name, you will see some additional information as well as some frequently asked questions regarding this specific plan. Next page. Oh, there we go. By clicking on the Resources tab on the orange bar that runs across the top of the page, you will see a list of all forms that are available for Optum Bank account holders and employers alike. All the employee-facing forms you see here will also be available on each employee's personal web portal. Moving on to the Imports page. If your local education agency will be offering employees the option to make pre-tax HSA payroll deductions, these next few slides will show you how to submit those HSA contributions to Optum. I do want to note as well that on the Partners for Health website, there is a portal upload legend that is available, which will help walk you through these steps on uploading the contribution file one by one. After the presentation today, we will show you where to find this resource as well. The first step to complete, however, if you will offer employees pre-tax HSA contributions, will be to fill out the HSA funding information form, which is available on the Partners for Health website as well. By returning this form to Optum Account Services, your agency bank account will be added on file so that you may fund employees' HSA accounts. Once we have that information on file, you can submit employees' contributions by coming to the Imports page and scrolling down to Import Data. The screenshot displayed here is what the import data page will look like. Next slide. You will want to select the data to import as contributions and then select the open template hyperlink listed under step one. This will open an Excel spreadsheet template where you can enter the information requested in order to submit contributions to employees' HSAs. Once the template is filled out in entirety, save a copy of the file to your computer. It is best to not reopen the file before uploading to avoid losing formatting. Once you have saved the file to your computer, click Browse to find the file, and then click Import at the bottom of the page. Please note that it will take two business days for funds to be available in employees' accounts. If you want the funds to be available in employees' accounts on payday, we would recommend submitting the file two business days prior to ensure these funds are available to the employee then. Next page. By hovering over the Imports tab on the orange bar, you can scroll down to the Imports queue. Here you will be able to view files that you have uploaded as well as the status of that file. When you first submit the file, you may see it listed under the Pending section of the Import queue until it has been processed in our system. If you see the file listed under the Failed section, there may have been a formatting error that needs to be corrected in order for the records to be submitted to Optum. Once the file upload has been completed and successful, you will be able to click into the file by selecting the drop-down error next to whatever file is in question to view the details of the file, including the number of records processed, and if there were any errors with a specific record from that file. You can view these errors by clicking the View Errors button next to each file. 
Looking at the completed section of the import queue a little closer, you will see each file listed, along with notes under the failed records column indicating if there were any errors on a file that was sent. Any record that failed would indicate that a contribution has not yet been posted to an employee's account. You must view the error to see what went wrong, correct it, and submit another file in order to post contributions to the employee's account. If for any reason the entire file fails due to a formatting error, action must be taken to correct the issue and resend the file. Next slide. If you would prefer to view your files in an Excel spreadsheet, you can click into the file in question and click on the blue hyperlink stating exception report. This will allow you to view the errors and the reason the records erred on the file in an Excel format. If for any reason you cannot determine why a specific record failed or how to correct the error, please feel free to reach out to our account services team either via email or phone for assistance with the error. While each agency is responsible for reviewing and correcting their contribution errors, this team is available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for assistance in helping you with any questions that you may have. Next slide. The last tab we have to talk about is the Links tab. By hovering over the Links tab on the orange bar that runs across the top of the page, you will see direct links to IRS publications and other helpful websites which may be relevant to you or your employees. I do want to note as well that Optum has created personalized to the State of Tennessee flyers and documents which can be found on the State of Tennessee splash page at www.optumbank.com forward slash Tennessee. With the resources available to you here on the employer portal, as well as the State of Tennessee splash page and support from the account services team, I am confident that this change in vendors will go smoothly for everyone. There may be a bit of a learning curve, but please know that you can always reach out to account services for any questions that you may have. Thank you again for your time today. I will open it up for any uh, questions or any discussion that you have regarding the employer portal. Yes, I have a question. Sure. Um, on, I had my employees fill out a new health savings payroll deduction form, um, and there was a place for an employee ID. Um, it's my understanding we mail these back to Optimum Bank, right? We don't need a copy of those forms. Those are for you to provide either to the state or for you to do what you normally do to enroll the member in the HSA. The state will send over a file of the enrollments for the HSA in order to get that information into our system. So we don't actually need that form from you. Okay, so whatever we had on our PayFlex file will be sent to them. Right, whatever the new enrollments are, or whoever is enrolling in a 2021 HSA will be sent over to Optum so that we can get that information into our system via the file. Okay. That was perfect. Okay, so in other words, those will be in there, but if we have someone new, then that's when we'll go in and add that person. Um, like well, we you, can, you can add the demographic information for an employee, but the enrollment will need to come over via the file, and you should follow your standard process um, that you've always been doing to get somebody enrolled in the HSA. The state will be sending that information over to us via the file. Okay, thank you. Of course. And just clarification for the person who asked the question, uh, the state does not need a copy of your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, your, uh, the form that you were referring to, whatever amount that an employee may be contributing to their HSA via payroll deduction. That's really just internal for you. So if an employee says that they want to uh, put in 3500 into their HSA, you just need to use that form and then plug in the $3,500 into your system and in the Optum portal. The state would not need that either. Okay. Uh, one one other question I have is I have an employee that previously had an account, and he's asking me, um, you know, how does he roll that over? So will that automatically go in his account? Okay. So um, the state, we at the State and Benefits Administration are currently in the process of sending out an email to everyone, and this I would ask everyone to please listen very closely because this is a specific subset of people who will receive these uh, emails. We are sending out uh, a total of just over 7,000 emails. The first groups, um, first ones went out yesterday and an additional set is going out today. 
and then we will send those out reminder emails on November 12th and November 15th for people uh, who have not responded to it. But it's only going to people who are enrolled in the CDHP in 2020 and who through our enrollment period have chosen to enroll in the same plan for next year. Think of that really as just the only group of people who can move their funds from Payflex to Optum. If you're enrolled, uh, if you were enrolled in the CDHP years ago and you still have funds there, but you have since gone to the PPO, that's your own personal account and you cannot take those funds and move them to Optum. Only existing funds with Payflex from this year, uh, if you're enrolled there, can go to Payflex, uh, go to Optum. We're sending out uh, an email, like I said, on three separate dates to everyone. A lot of people should have gotten it yesterday. Another group will get them today. And it will ask them to complete this survey. It's really just a yes, no uh, uh, survey, giving them the option, hey, do you want to take the funds that are currently with your Payflex HSA, and do you allow the state to work to uh, move them from Payflex to Optum? Tell us yes or no, and there's a checkbox. They'll need to provide us their first name, their last name, and the last four of their social. And then that's really it. And then we're going to, after, after the end of those three weeks, we'll take all the people who say yes, they want their funds transferred, and we will work in early uh, next year to move those funds over. And that, that email explains all of the details, and it tells when the debit card will be shut off and so forth. Thanks, Steve. Did, did that make sense, ma'am? Keith, I thought it made great sense. Thank you for walking oh, okay. through that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I see a question in the chat box from Cindy, but it looks like Cindy might have gotten her answer. So um, are there any other questions that you'd like to either top, type into the chat or feel free to take yourself off mute and uh, ask your question? This is a great time if you have any. I do see the, um, that Diana Smart had asked to please repeat um, my information. This is Heather. Um, Diana, if you need to, to reach me, you can do that through the benefits.info at tn.gov um, email address. I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for, but if it's not, just please just clarify in the chat box. Um, it looks like, or, go ahead, Lenny, were you about to say something? Uh, no, no, I was. Uh, just, we did get another question in the chat, and I don't know if you were getting. Yeah, I can I can read those for you. Yeah, it looks like we have a question. We have a question here from Candace Waits, and she says, "At approximately what date in January will the employer be able to upload a contribution file?" As soon as the enrollments come over from the state. Um, that will be opened up for contributions to be submitted. Um, you can submit the contribution template to upload contributions anytime after the first of the year. So you're you're welcome to get that get that rolling if you guys have a payroll that comes through, you know, the first week of January. All right. Thanks, Nicole. We have a question from Sherry Cannon. Do I understand this correctly? We open the template to enter the information for contributions manually each month, or is there a more automated process? There is an option where you can set up the recurring contributions um, so that you don't have to submit an individual template each um, payroll period. That option is right underneath the imports tab as well. You'll see the, the set up the recurring option there and you do have to fill out a template still to be able to get that information submitted to us, but you can submit a recurring one, yes. All right. Next question is from um, Joan, and she says, does everyone currently enrolled in Payflex have to convert to Optum by the 1st of January? Uh, 
Um, I will be happy to take that one. The um, opportunity to move the balances over from PayFlex for those who have elected the CDHP local plan um, for 2021, there will be a window of time where they will bulk transfer over and the expected date for those funds to be available in the account is uh, March 5th. Um, is sort of a, the, the latest date we expect that to happen. But if a participant uh, for some reason either misses it or changes their mind later and decides to transfer the funds over into an open active Optum HSA account, uh, they'll still have the opportunity to do that. Um, they would just work with Optum uh, in order to get a uh, transfer form completed to send to PayFlex. The cards and welcome letters will go out to Optum HSA account holders. Um, Mid-December-ish is the, the time frame, probably 14th, 15th, when folks should expect to see those arriving in two separate mailings in the mailbox. And so there will be the uh, telephone number and email address on those resources to contact Optum Customer Care for any of your employees who want to contact, contact us directly with questions like, how do I transfer my funds? Thanks, Lenny. I'll just piggyback on that and also say that um, plan members who have an HSA with PayFlex are not required to transfer their funds over to Optum if they do not want to. Uh, they can say no on the survey question even if they're going to be enrolled in the local CDHP next year. They will have an Optum HSA open for them in December, and they can still have their PayFlex HSA with funds in it. You, you, there's no rule that says you can't have more than one HSA. However, if they leave that PayFlex HSA open, they be, it becomes a retail account, a personal account between them and PayFlex, and they'll be, become responsible for paying the monthly uh, account maintenance fee, and those funds will be deducted from their bank account. And they also need to keep in mind uh, any contributions they might want to make to PayFlex would be after tax, and there's a still a total IRS maximum HSA limit that they can contribute. And if they're putting payroll con uh, contributions in their Optum HSA, they need to take that into account if they put fun funds in their PayFlex HSA. They're still subject to the IRS max. All right, thanks, Keith. I'm going to move on to our next question from Cheryl Allen. And Cheryl says, will funds be available to the employees in January or will there be a delay? And um, Cheryl, I can take this question. Um, so if, you, if your employees have enrolled in the CDHP HSA for um, 2021, those seed funds will be available in January. Or I'm sorry, no, that's for state and higher ed. If they have, if they are making payroll contributions, those will be available in January. But any anything transferring from um, PayFlex will not be available until um, the first week of March. Yeah, that's right, Heather. And I will piggyback on that. That the PayFlex account will still be open and active. The card can still be used. Uh, reimbursements can continue to be made. Uh, so the, it's a period of time from January 1st to February 7th when both accounts, Optum and PayFlex, will be open and active. Uh, but February 8th, the uh, PayFlex account will go into a dark or blackout period for PayFlex to prepare closing and transferring those accounts for those who elected to have those funds transferred. So from February 8th till about March 1st, those PayFlex funds are gonna be unavailable. So you would want to encourage account holders that if they're gonna need funds from that PayFlex account to go ahead and, and, and request a reimbursement or, or use those funds prior to February 8th. Is there anything you would add to that, Keith? No, that's correct. And just the email okay. that is going out to uh, current enrollees who will be enrolled in the local CDHP again 
next year. It does give them all of those dates and it tells them that if they say yes to the transfer, they can continue to use their PayFlex HSA debit card through February 7th, and then that card will be shut off on February the 8th uh, to allow PayFlex time to liquidate all accounts, including any investments if someone's invested, and to be able to move uh, those funds over to Optum to show up in their account the first week of March. All right, thanks, Keith and Lenny. I'm going to move on to our next question from Christy, and Christy says, if an employee receives an email and has a CDHP but doesn't contribute to their HSA, do they need to return the email? We encourage everyone to answer all of the questions, either yes or no. Uh, that way we have a record of it. Uh, even if they're not contributing to their HSA, it's a good idea for them to respond to the survey, yes. Or I should say, then they should say, uh, no, they don't want to transfer their funds even if there are no funds. Thanks, Keith. Our next question is from Cindy. Just to clarify, do we need to add the current employees to the template or will that be done automatically? Apologies, I was on, I was on mute. Um, you will need to add them to uh, the file manually for the first time. That file can be saved so you don't have to do that work additionally over and over each pay period, or you can choose to do the recurring contribution option as well. Um, so you will have to create that initial initial file in order with the information in order for it to be submitted to Optum, yes. Thanks, Nicole. Our next question is from Scott. So just to be clear, we do not upload a file from our payroll system like we did with PayFlex but we create an Excel file in Optum to load contributions to be pulled from our bank. That is correct, yes. We have a, a template in an Excel format um, that has the information that we need in order to uh, deposit those contributions. We do need you to fill that out and upload it through the Optum portal. Thank you. Next question is from Diana. When did you say we would get the email from Optum? I don't have one today. Hi, Diana. Um, you should have received the email today already. Um, if you haven't received it and nobody else from your uh, specific agency has received it as well, you can reach out to the email address that's on screen here, the account services at optum.com, or you can give them a call here. I, the only caveat with that is I just want to note that somebody from the agency that has access would need to call and request that. The Optum account services team wouldn't be able to just add access by request of anybody. So it would have to be somebody that already has that access. If nobody from your agency has, has it already, you can use the um, new client checklist form, which Linny is going to go to on, under the agency benefit coordinator site on Partners for Health website um, to be able to get that access added for you. All right, thanks, Nicole. Our next question is from Cheryl, and Cheryl asks, Cheryl says, I had to join late this morning. Where will this recorded presentation be available? And Cheryl, um, the presentation will be available on the Partners for Health YouTube channel sometime next week. And it looks like, I believe Tammy had a question, but she says her question has been answered. So I'll move down to our next question from Jennifer. We have an ACH restriction on our bank account. Who can we contact to get the company ACH ID from Optum? We have to have this to allow access for our account to be drafted. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for asking that question today. Um, you can reach out to the account services email, or you can give them a call at that phone number that's on the screen as well. Any member of that team would be able to assist you with that request. Great. Thanks, Nicole. Next question is from Kristen. Is there any way to upload a file into the portal instead of using the Excel file? We have hundreds of employees that have HSAs and it is forever changing. It would be very difficult for me to do that manually each month. Um, you, we do have an option to upload a file um, via the SFTP connection. 
um, if you're interested in, you know, creating a file with um, our formatting, that is definitely something that we can take a look at. I would recommend that you reach out to that account services inbox or give them a call there so that you can get the specs in order to be able to create that file to upload via SFTP, if that's the route you want to go. Great. Next question is from Cindy. What is our group ID number or where can that info be found? So the group ID number um, that is populated for each individual agency is going to be the same number that you used with PayFlex. We were able to transfer that same information over. Um, if you do not know what that is, you can always give a call to the um, account services team and let them know the name of your group and they should be able to assist you with that, but it really is going to be the same number that you used with PayFlex. It's going to be the same for Optum. And I would just get back on that, Nicole, and uh, tell Cindy that uh, with PayFlex, they call that your employer ID number and uh, Optum is calling that your group ID number. I believe it might be a six digit number. Okay, yes, and it is key, thank you. It is six digits. Potato, potato. Thank you for that clarification, Keith. <laughs> all right, I that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have a question. Um, we ha we are able to on our accounting system uh, do a CSV file and download it into a um, to something I'm I'm thinking that would be similar with your template. Um, do you think that's going to be something possible for us? Um, it is a CSV file that you would be uploading through the employer portal. You just would have to use that template that we provide in order for it to go through if you wanted to, to upload a file like that. Okay, so we could use that template and, and create ours and upload it like that because normally we would upload, and I did talk to um, to our accounting software folks, and I, and I told them that, you know, we had used PayFlex, and I sent them um, the formatting that you guys were going to need, and they said everything looked good. So um, I'd still need to get with um, account services just to make sure that I could upload that file. Perfect. Yeah, as long as the formatting is the same from that template that you can get from the employer portal, um, then mm -hmm. you should have no problem uploading that through right through the website. Okay. Well, is there like a test type situation where we could do some testing on it just to make sure? Is that available to us? Um, not when you're uploading the file directly through the employer portal, just because the template is very, very self-explanatory. There's really only the information that's on there. There's like six different fields that need to be filled out. Um, but uh -huh. I will say that on the Agency Benefit Coordinators tab from the Partners for Health website, there is um, a resource there that you can use in order to help walk you through um, submitting or filling out that template and then submitting that file as well. And I think Lenny's going there right now. We can give you a show on how to how to see that information. Okay. I just want so to point I out, um, mm -hmm. Cindy, I sent you a private Go message. Check your private messages, Cindy, that asked the question about the group ID. I sent something to you. If you can respond to me, I'll get you an answer. Thanks, Keith. Um, on the Partners for Health site, I clicked on Agency Benefit Coordinator tab. I suspect many of you are quite familiar with this. Um, there is an Optum Bank 2021 link, which when you click on it brings up several resources that Nicole has been referring to throughout our conversation today. Um, which one would you like me to look at first, Nicole? So the employer oh, portal straight. legend, the employer portal legend that's listed there um, is just going to be the resource to help walk you through um, completing that template uh, from the employer portal. Um, here are the general steps, and then when you click down to the contribution record layout, you will see how everything should be laid out within that Excel template. Very simple, um, pretty self-explanatory on there. Um, and if, you know, when you do upload a file, if there are any errors, especially if it's formatting errors, um, the website's going to let you know. It'll let you know on that error report, and you'll see that all of the records have failed if there's anything wrong with the formatting on there. Yeah, so what is that, six fields? So 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the top one is the Optum Bank Employer Portal Guide, which we had discussed previously as well. Um, just a link to a resource in, to help you walk through the employer portal. If you're ever wondering how to do something or where I can find something, this portal is going to be very helpful for, for that information. Um, it's a really great walkthrough, pretty easy. It goes right in order from the, um, the orange bar that runs across the top of the page, all those tabs that are there. Um, a lot of the screenshots that I had in the presentation will also be, you'll see in this portal guide. Um, very helpful. Um, I will say that there are um, the other resources that are available on that site, um, the payroll macro form, that's just the template the template that you can also find from the employer portal um, that you'll be able to use to upload those contributions. Sorry, you can see my bandwidth is a little low, right? <laughs> it's taking a few minutes to load. You guys are probably going to run quite a bit quicker. But here is the template that Nicole has been referencing. And if you hover over the the with the line one up there, yep, it'll give you a little bit more information as well in regards to each field on how they should be filled out. Does anyone have any questions on that while we have it open? I have a question on the employer oh. identifier. Oh, back on the uh, the file. My apologies. Let me bring That's it back okay. up. The employee identifier is that going to be like a social security number, or is that going to be like a where, where would we have that security in? number? Okay, yeah. okay. So we're not putting a name, just a social security number. Correct. Okay. Correct. question any any other questions on this that we can address for you tell you what I'm just gonna move it instead of close it so we don't open it again um, the employee payroll deduction form I, I believe you referenced this Nicole Yes, I did. This is the form that um, employees will fill out just to determine how much that they are going to contribute into the account. Um, again, we don't need a copy of it. Sounds like the state doesn't need a copy of it either. It's more for your records in order to um, input that information so that it can get transmitted over to Optum. Yep. It's got a helpful grid on here to help folks determine a per pay roll period amount to reach a particular annual. And this does have the 2021 uh, max annual contribution limits noted. Um, Nicole, I believe you also talked about the uh, bank setup form for the funding for HSAs. Yes, yes. Um, this is the form that you'll want to fill out and return back to account services so that you are able to um, fund employees' payroll contributions if you do offer that option. Um, the form can be returned back to account services and they will go ahead and get that information in, input into our system. And someone asked earlier about an ACH ID uh, to give their bank so that um, the funds can be pulled. I believe that's that originator ID. Yes, it sure is. That's on this document. Hey, Lenny, this is Heather, and I believe that our next question is related that to that, what you just said. She said, can you repeat what you said about how to get the company ACH ID from Optum? You bet. And I just Perfect. pulled up the wrong form. Let me go back to it. Okay. The HSA contribution form, this is the form that you would complete to provide um, the account services department so they can uh, put 
it upload the banking information. And that ACH or originator ID is 1470858534. I can make that right. a little bigger. Um, uh, the account services team is definitely any questions like that. Their email address is also on this form as well as the 800 number where they can be reached if there's any questions while completing this form. Okay, great. So, Tammy, that should have answered your question. Our next question is from Scott, and Scott says, so December employee deductions for HSA still go to PayFlex, correct? And Scott, I can confirm for you that yes, those December deductions would still go to PayFlex. Our next question is, how do we create an employer account? Well, perfect segue yeah. to this new form, <laughs> the final form that's available. So, Nicole, there you go. On the screen here, you'll see the Optum Bank new client checklist form. You will want to go ahead and fill out all the different fields on the form that you are able to, um, including the primary contact and contact number two number if there's a second person that needs to have access to the portal, and then indicate which roles from the portal that you would like for that contact to have. Um, we will get your information updated into our system. Um, get some contacts set up, get some access sent out so everybody can uh, log into the portal as needed. And then to accompany that, you would also want to send the um, other form for uh, setting up the bank account so that we are able to get the bank account on file if you're going to allow for payroll contributions to be submitted as well. Form can be returned as well to account services at, at optum.com. All right. Thanks, Nicole. The next question. Sorry, guys, I'm scrolling through here. Okay, next question is from Darlene. The, do the emails that are being sent out to employees have all of the information and dates that have been discussed in it? Um, and I can take that one, Darlene. The email that has gone out is, it does have quite a lot of detail in it. It does explain um, the two choices and what will happen on each choice, whether you select yes or no, and it, it does include all of the important dates. Let's see, let's move on to our next question. Unless anyone else has anything they'd like to add to that while I'm looking here. Looks like our next question is from Diana. Who did you say we contact if we don't receive the email? I am the one who does the upload, but I asked. I assume that you mean the, the email in order to gain you access into the employer portal. I think so, is, I think so, yeah. If there's somebody else from your HR team who has received the email, have them reach out to our account services team, either via email or phone number and they can request that another person be added with access. Um, I believe that access was granted to all of the primary HR departments for every agency, and then anybody additional to be added after that would need to come by request from somebody who already has that access. If nobody from your agency has access to the employer portal as of right now, you can use that new client checklist form and fill out the um, information on there, and then you'll be able to put the information for who should have access to the portal as well on that form and get it back over to account services, and we'll get everybody added in there. Okay, great. And we have, let's see, a couple of questions below. Both Tammy and Scott are asking for a clarification on what, what would the plan name be? Sure, the plan name is just HSA, and that can be populated all the way down in that field for every record. All right, thanks, Nicole. And it looks like um, Keith has included a link to the survey. Um, so if you guys want to copy that link, you can um, take a look at the survey and the detail that it includes. 
And that's all the questions I am seeing for now. While we're hanging out here for a minute, just want to remind everyone that the slides will go out in the ABC email and the recording of the, um, the webinar today will be available on the Partners for Health YouTube channel next week. Are there any other questions out there? We've got a little bit more time. Thanks, Teresa. Teresa Jones, welcome. Awesome. We look forward to working with you. Great job on the presentation. Um, and yes, thank you very much, Lenny and Nicole. You guys are doing a great job. Well, we do appreciate that. Thanks to Nicole for doing the heavy lift on this and for all of you. Thank you, Teresa, and all of you for uh, your participation. This has been awesome. You've had great questions. Uh, but we do have a few more minutes. If you have any more, happy to address those for you. Yeah, we'll hang out here for a minute, see if anyone else has questions. There have been some really good questions. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Looks like we have one other question in the chat box. Did you say the benefit administrator was set up to have access already, or do we need to submit this information? Yes, yeah, so every agency's primary benefit administrator should have received an email um, with, including with a temporary password in order to get the access to that. If for some reason you did not receive that, you can definitely reach out to the account services team to confirm maybe it, um, it was sent and it just wasn't received or maybe it went to the spam folder, um, but they would definitely be able to at least troubleshoot with you and see where that went and get you the appropriate information to get get a, get yourself access into the account. And then a follow-up, who would the email come from? The email would have come from account notices at support.optum.com. There it is. In the upper right-hand corner is the step one email in the Optum portal credentials. And this is, it's a kind of a fuzzy picture, but we uh, wanted to provide you a sample of what that email would look like when it comes to your email box in the box on the right. Okay, next question and from Darlene. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna add, if you don't have it, do check your spam folder. We do hear feedback uh, from uh, administrative users sometimes that that's where it ends up at, depending on the filters for your email system. So it's another resource to check. All right, next question is from Darlene. Do we have a checklist as an ABC of things that we need to get done in regards to Optum? Sorry, I had the same questions when we went with Payflex. Hey, darling, it's a, it's a lot to remember. That it is. Um, I don't have a checklist that's prepared on just what needs to be done. Um, I do think that this presentation will be a good resource for you in order to determine that information, as well as those resources on the Agency Benefit um, Coordinators tab from the Partners in Health website. Any additional questions, uh, the account services team is really great. They're, they're very helpful, they're very patient. They are more than happy to help answer any of your questions that you may have, help steer you in the right direction. Um, but otherwise, you can definitely refer to this presentation or any of the resources for a little bit of a take in the right direction. All right, thanks, Nicole. And just in case someone has missed, missed this information, we will send the presentation out with the AUC email. All right, any other questions? We've got about five minutes here. Okay, well, if there are no further questions, I just want to one last time, thank everyone for, for joining us today. And I want to also, again, thank Lenny and Nicole for a 
great presentation and I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you We're looking so forward to working with you. Have a great weekend. Thank you.